at 150 or 40 feet down. And we were looking around us and not seeing my body that there is something. I did. You were my body for many times. And Khalifa were, was my body for many times. I had this feeling, especially when I get into a cave and watch for eels or stingrays. There was a feeling of, I'm not the only one who is giving bubbles mm -hmm. at that place. <coughs> there are some, you know, sort of boom, boom and not fish. Like Subhanallah. Akhi, like Allahu A'lam. But I'm telling you, we've been licensed by Paddy, the American mm -hmm. Association, for almost eight years now or more. More than eight years, 10 years almost, right? And we're both advanced divers, but we need to practice, right? This might fall, I'm, I'm afraid. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best not to cover it. And okay, is that a command? Okay, he said, at the depths of the seas, oceans and rivers, they have got kingdoms, cities, constructions and together with the great deserts of the world from Nevada in America to the Sahara in Africa to that of Asia Siberia full of kingdoms of, for the jinn all the high mountains are their camps all the empty places are their camps so this planet is inhabited. Maybe there is not a span without someone Yusabbihullah or Yahmadullah. They inhabit the caves in the mountains. Some of them do inhabit the holes. Like snakes. The holes. And the cracks. And with all this enormous presence, they are crowding us in our own homes and, and rooms, at work, in the streets. So if you can see the jimmies, you would see no free space in the whole world. If you are allowed to see the jimmies. Now we believe that they are with us because each one of us has got a qareen from al jinn. And he's, he's listening now. And he might be saying, oh, this guy got that information. But he's not that accurate in this. Maybe. Allahu A'lam. Some of them are permanent stayers in our houses. In our rooms, in our halls, in our yards. And some of them are devils and shayateen which inhabits our toilets and bathrooms. That's why we say, Na'udhu Billahi min al And some of them inhabit the sewage, small sewage holes. It is their home. Are they either good or bad? Or are they like... No, those inhabiting inside are the evil ones. No, I'm the saying... The toilet. <coughs> I'm saying, are, are, are they like people, like, for example, all quote-unquote mushrik, of the humans aren't quote unquote evil. No. I mean, they, they're mushrik, we no. know that. No. But they're not always harming Muslims like this mm -hmm. and like that. So some of them are like that also? No. Okay. But whoever is shaitan is no. only evil. Sir, sir. But the, because there are two types, he explained to him that jinnis and shayateen are two different types. They are made from the same fire, but the fire is like something different from the nature of the fire that shaitan is made of and the jinnis are made from. He will explain that. But when he asked him for more, he said, I can't say anymore. That's it. Tayyip. In a nutshell, they are a unique world by themselves. They feel their own world as if it is their own homes, plantation, Cities, history, faith and dogmas, parties, populations, 
kings, universities, hospitals, and everything you imagine in your world is found in the genie's world. Later on, we will know that the Salafi jinnis, females, are covered ones with veins. You might be shocked to know that. طيب. Those who live in the cities or villages or towns mostly are mostly Muslims. Whereas some of them are not. But the others who are not Muslims don't prefer to live in the cities and towns and except in the toilets and that those places, dirty places. Christian genies inhabit the Christian houses, mostly. And most of the Christian genies are settled in the churches. They love it. The Jewish ones in their abbeys and with the Jewish people. And a huge number are found in the so-called Israel. Affected <coughs> and affecting. So there is like interaction, you know, like a circle. The Muslim jinn is always seeking Muslim house to live in. And they seek the true Muslim practicing ones, not the ones by name, because they want to learn from them. And to be behind them in salah, even if they're not aware. If they pray a sunnah, you would find five, six of them or ten, a family of Muslims, jinnis. And they are exactly having a line of adults, then kids, then their females. Behind you, praying with you. And if you beautifully, you know, affect their, their voice, your voice of Quran, they would love you and get closer to you never harming you on the opposite they try their best to defend you against any evil jinni yet their percentage amongst the whole jinnis all over the world is like the percentage of the muslims and the practicing <coughs> ones are like the practicing ones amongst the muslims so they're suffering being persecuted being put in jail being killed being tortured exactly as many of the true muslims are treated in this dunya You'd be amazed to know that. When a, jinni, a Muslim jinni finds that those Muslims are not practicing Islam, they are Muslims by name, they are not praying, they would leave very upset and sad. Seeking another house which the name of Allah is mentioned sincerely in. A, a Muslim jinni is extremely sincere in his deen and he is applying his deen extremely literally letter by letter and his heart is full of iman that when he hears the quran he immediately tears down and he has got that inhaling and exhaling loud as the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba did. And moaning and signing from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other genies, when they hear him, they are moved to crying as well. I asked my colleague, is there any Muslim jinni in my house you can see? He said, yes. All the genies in your house are Muslims. And I'll give you two of their names. Saeed and Morjan. They are the two sons of a mother jinniya called Zubaida. And her husband is Muhammad, the father of the two. And they've got many kids, other kids, hanging in the roof of your room now. And they are like servants of that house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is driving away, dismissing many of the hardships of that house because of the presence of those jinnis here. I said, 
don't they get tired from being hanging and sticking to the roof? He said, the whole day they are like that. Once they put the food, they get down, say Bismillah and eat with you. Which doesn't affect the amount of food you're eating. It increases the blessings. If you remove the food, they thank Allah SWT and get back hanging. Until the night comes. When they pray Al Isha and they hang to the roof a little, if they feel tired, they get down and sleep on any couch, cushion, or chair in this very hall you have. But they wake up during the night for tahajjud, pray the night, then pray Al Fajr, and when they fly around the roof, they keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are blessed, my dear brother. <coughs> I said, don't they leave the house for any need or travel or anything? He said, yes, they do. Naam. Travel, and they come back. Sometimes they go to Al-Haram for prayer, either in Mecca or in Medina. And they come in a blinking of an eye to their house, yours. I said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the house for me, my family, and for them. Then he commented, he said, the presence of the jinni Muslim in a house, in a Muslim house, is a sign of goodness and a proof for blessing and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that genie makes dua for the inhabitants.